All these miners that are pulling it out of the ground, uh, you know, it's, it's one thing to be investing in the companies. We're the end user provider. Uh, we're looking to give you the opportunity to invest in the physical precious metals. Uh, we are an all-encompassing company uh, that is obviously, too, looking at managing the paper aspect of the portfolio, which I'll go into a little bit, too. But we started 40 years ago as a precious metals firm. Uh, Don McIlvaney has had a newsletter for 30 years as well. Uh, hopefully you guys are familiar with the name. David McIlvaney has taken over as president and CEO uh, about six years ago and has taken the company to new heights and got the wealth management arm going. Uh, so we'll you know, try to leave just a couple minutes for a Q&A. I'm in a booth in the uh, exhibit hall as well. Uh, we're giving away a 10th ounce gold American Eagle uh, if you're interested in that. Uh, but I want to talk a lot about you know, the first 10 minutes, why the bull market's going to continue so that everybody leaves here without a doubt as to, as to the fundamentals that are driving the physical metals market, uh, gold and silver in general. Uh, we also obviously platinum and palladium. So really what you have to understand is uh, deadism is the issue. Richard Duncan wrote a great book, The Corruption of Capitalism. We've all seen the landscape change here, especially in the last 10 years. We've gone from capitalism to deadism. Deadism you know, eventually leads to uh, a paradigm shift into statism and that's kind of what we're seeing here drive the prices that doesn't mean you can't go back uh, but we have to focus on the fundamentals and I think all too often people are looking at the price okay and we're looking at the price per ounce of gold when I spoke here three years ago uh, the price was you know about seven hundred dollars an ounce it was 2008 things had just come down and there was a lot of concern out there and we were saying the same message then if you look at the fundamentals you know that we're going back up this is a lot like the transition phase 1976 when we had gone from $65 an ounce up to $235 an ounce. Uh, you get a little unsettling and you kind of think, what now? But really try to do your best to understand the trends and transitions. Look into the historical uh, aspect of gold and take into account, too, the global aspect. This isn't a Western phenomenon like it was in 1980. Uh, this is a global phenomenon. Uh, starting with Asia, there's multiple fundamentals here that I'm going to touch base on. I've heard a lot of good things up here in the, in the working dinner last night, and I'm sure we will at lunch as well, most of which I agreed with, uh, particularly uh, diversifying into the physical metals for these reasons. Uh, Asia, obviously, has become the dominant leader. 68% uh, of metals buying back in the, in the 70s and 80s was Europe and Asia. We now are 28%. I mean, sorry, Europe and, and, uh, and North America. Now it's 28% and it's 60 percent of the market is is being grabbed up by Asia so you know despite what you may hear in the Western world uh, they get it over there gold is flowing China's holding on to everything that they produce plus they're buying an additional 40 to 60 tons per month as you see at the bottom there and they're encouraging their citizens to buy the Shanghai exchange open, opening in the summer of 2012 will take a lot of the manipulation in our opinion out of the market a lot of the manipulation by the London and the New York exchanges Inflation, I know we, we beat it up a little bit last night. I think part of the issue in the debate is there's too many camps that are looking for one or the other. Our opinion is you're going to see both concurrently. Each of them are occurring at the same time. It just depends on which asset class that you're seeing it in. So, you know, clearly uh, inflation and deflation can occur at the same time, and that's what's been going on. But it has to be part of the solution from an inflationary standpoint because of the debt. And we'll talk, you know, specifically about that as well. But Inflation, you have to understand, is a subtle form of default. If they can inflate the currency at 3% a year, well, it takes three years to have robbed you of 9% of your cash holdings value. And that's exactly what they're doing. And the reason inflation is necessary is it's the politically correct way for them to reduce the debt. So you hear a lot of talk about purposeful manipulation, that sort of thing. Absolutely. Because if they're not going to manipulate wages down, which is a very political, volatile move to do, uh, because the, then the poor are paying for the increase in revenues. If you're trying to stimulate employment with ra wage uh, suppression, you're going you're gonna to get a political kickback. Uh, you can tax the rich. You can go after the rich and have them pay for the, for the increased revenues that are necessary out there right now. Obviously, that can have a little bit of political kickback as well, uh, but it doesn't do much. You can tax them at 100%, and the estimates are between 500 and $800 billion in the first year that you tax the rich, the top 1.9% at 100%. And it just doesn't put a dent into even our one year's worth of debt that we're trying to deal with. Uh, so the trick is to put it on the backs of the middle class in the form of inflation. It's hidden. And you can blame others. You can blame pricing. You can blame imports. 
uh, due to the exporters. You can blame the Middle East for oil prices. So it, without keeping your eye on the ball, people fall for the, uh, for the inflation trick. We can do it because we have the world reserve currency. Here right here, you see the value of the dollar in gold grams. That's what it's doing. Looks to me like a real steady decline. Uh, clearly, you know, the trend line will, will continue. If you were to extend back all the way to, to 1918, uh, you would see that it's lost 95% uh, when measured in gold, and, and that's something that, that's even a little overused in the, in the gold world. Velocity of money, inflation, what they're trying to do is increase the Fed's footprint. If they can take $2 trillion and send it out there with the reserve lending, the fractional reserve lending, they want that footprint to turn into 5 to 10 times that amount. Is it hitting Main Street yet? No. Are we feeling it here? No. But what we've done is export it around the world. We caused the Mideast spring. Uh, food and fuel prices spiking, you know, is what has caused the, the Mideast uprising in a sense. And you're seeing it in the developing nations that are getting pretty frustrated with the U.S. dollar. Uh, and that will, that will have an impact as a result. Uh, a gentleman talked last night about the Federal Reserve having to print. Here we see the, you know, the uh, St. Louis monetary base that was alluded to last night. Uh, that's quite the spike, and it's offsetting what we're losing in regards to uh, foreign debt holders. Uh, the dollar is losing favor around the world, and that will continue to be the case. And until we get a currency transition, you can count on gold offsetting that. And the, the, the important thing to note is inflation uh, is something that we'll, we'll talk in here a little bit, but gold far outpaces the inflation. As Mish mentioned last night, the U.S. dollar index is still at 80. The gold price was at 690. The U.S. dollar is at 80 now. Gold price is at 1600. Okay, but th but we haven't seen anything yet in terms of those inflationary pressures. But gold offsets it uh, tremendously. So anyway, this is a this is a currency melt up that we've that we've stimulated around the world. What a few people understand is that gold also does well in periods of great deflation. So don't let the deflation argument talk you out of the physical metals. It's one of multiple fundamentals. However. Uh, between 1600 and 1971, David McIlvaney did a real in-depth study on this. He presented at the Harry Dent conference uh, to financial planners down in Florida. Harry Dent, you know, feels strongly that gold's going to go back down to around 1475 before it uh, takes off and runs to 2500. We disagree. Uh, deflationary waves, a lot of times gold will act like a currency, and we've started to see it in the last two years. I watch it every day. The U.S. dollar can go up, the stock market can go down, and gold is going up as well. So don't look at it as always necessarily being counter to what we're seeing uh, in the deflationary pressures. And it's not just credit deflation. And we'll talk about uh, deflation in terms of real deflation uh, being gold measured in, in other values. Okay? It often acts as a currency. And because of that, it's the only predictable asset and the best form of credit. We have to break that paradigm that it doesn't always track with commodities, okay? or that it does track with commodities. It does not. And I would recommend that you look at it no longer as a commodity. Website PricedInGold.com is something I would recommend all of you go look at. Here we see uh, true values. Now, we know that we've seen the gold price come off, so this column here, a month ago, we're seeing a little bit of an increase in the value of things, uh, like the Dow Jones and the S&P, uh, the U.S. dollar, when measured in gold. Look at where we were a year ago. Don't tell me, okay, that the fundamentals are in place for that that, that's purchasing power, okay? And that's what you're looking at for your gold. By you diversifying a portion of your portfolio into the physical metals, you're looking at increasing your purchasing power in all of these categories, okay? Including crude oil. Despite the fact that it's, that it's had quite the run, uh, it's deceiving, okay? And so gold's purchasing power is what drives it, all right? If you look at that website, you can start to track those things. but. Uh, the biggest driver of all of this is, is the debt, and that's why everything is, in, is reacting the way it is. Uh, we are assured of a, of a continued weak dollar policy. Like I alluded to, they have to in order to pay off the debt. These figures here, all right, we've got 15 trillion, 15 and a half really. Uh, at the end of this year, it'll be 17 trillion if the, if the deficit uh, grows as projected. Currently, we're at 2.18 percent in interest rates. That gives us $327 billion just in interest payments a year. What happens if the interest payments climb to 3 percent, 450, 4 percent? Now we've doubled to $600 billion a year. Tell me why they're trying to manipulate the interest rates down. The interest rate suppression is manipulated. It is purposeful. 
And in that regard, it's saving us from ourselves. To his credit, Bernanke has told Congress, the real issue is your debt, all right? Yes, the Federal Reserve is printing like crazy, all right? They are serving as the last buyer of our debt right now. However, if we don't control the debt, that's going to continue. The money supply will continue to climb because they're going to continue to have to manipulate the interest rates down. They have to stimulate buying in the credit markets. Uh, we cannot afford interest rates to climb right now because it's still a consumer-based society. And if we take those interest rates and let them, let them climb, um, look out. Now, is it going to happen? Yeah, we think it'll happen. The bond market's always the boss. Uh, central banks, uh, you've seen a 25-year trend reversal. 2009, central banks have become net buyers uh, for the first time in, in over 25 years. And it's continuing. And as you see here, uh, you know, at the bottom, Jim Sinclair has even said the next step is nationalization of, of gold. So anybody that's holding gold overseas, much like what Venezuela did, they're going to start re-importing and taking possession of their metals just like you would out of an ETF or, or a futures contract. Um, they increased purchases, central banks, 500% last year, sorry, as you'll see at the bottom. 500%. And it does affect the physical product availability. We are not in a major pinch right now, but we were in 2008, and we're constantly on the edge of availability and what you can buy physically. Dow versus gold, huge indicator, all right? This is a, this is a psychological trend uh, that you can see, and I'll, and I'll tell you in a minute how it's related to the real rate of return. But the extremes of hope and fear, uh, as, as uh, Mickey attested to last night, they drive a lot. And in, you have to understand that that being said, looking at the long-term volatility uh, of Dow versus gold, we're coming off a 43.7 high back in the early part of the last decade, okay? As you see these peaks to troughs, what that's telling you is that the market has gone down and gold has gone up and they offset each other and they get down into these basement levels. Uh, Russell Napier wrote a book called Anatomy of the Bear. It's an excellent read. It's uh, very much a college textbook, but mandatory reading in my opinion if you want to know what's coming in terms of the anatomy of the bottom of these markets, uh, of the equities markets in relation to commodities. Russell Napier. Uh, we interviewed him on the weekly commentary again two weeks ago. Uh, at what we're seeing here, you know, is we're going to get down into this range. Right now, we're actually about 7.9 on the Dow to gold ratio, meaning the price of the Dow Jones, 13,200 divided by 1680 on the spot price of gold. Very easy math for you to do and track. When that starts getting down into the four to one range, we'll start talking about reallocating. And we'll talk about that in a little minute, in a little bit. But what that's done is we've seen a six, six time increase in your purchasing power in gold from here to here. We're going to see another six-time increase as we go from here down into that one to two range. So if you think you've missed it, think again, and we can't urge you more strongly enough that you're, you're halfway there. Uh, here's the recent Dow Gold ratio, and you'll see how it's dipped, again, just in that last decade. It's had a nice little uh, bump up here lately. The investment demand is driving the metals market. We will continue to see it. Hedge funds, David McIlvaney was at a a conference of 500 hedge fund managers in New York City two weeks ago. Druckenmiller uh, stood up as a hedge fund manager and said, mandate number one, own physical. We've had hedge fund managers call us, which has never happened in the past. And, and it's something that people realize uh, that while the mining supplies are decreasing and the investment demand picks up because of the ETFs and, and how they have to be backed, we are getting into a, into a physical pinch. Other issue, we're not yet at the manic phase of the gold bull market, just like you saw in 1980. At some point, we've gone through phase one and two. Uh, phase one is this group here that's been coming to this conference, and they knew, and they were ahead of the curve, and they were getting in at 250 $300 an ounce. Last time I was here, it, it had corrected back down to 750 uh, Phase two, we've gone through, and we're on the verge of starting phase three, and I'll show you kind of a consolidation. But this is when you get into that speculative bubble that everybody has, has said that we've been in which clearly we are not in, uh, but yet we feel strongly we will be in, okay? And we're talking about a parabolic move of 1500 to $5,000. 3% uh, or less of the American public has stepped into the physical buying market. Uh, that will swell before phase three. It's not like you're going to see 20% of the public buy it, uh, but it only takes a couple percentage point move in that regard. And uh, it's going to take place all over the world, not just in the United States. And that gives you the projected value. This is an old chart uh, that is proven to be very, very accurate. 
real rate of return, if you leave here with one point that I can give you, uh, it's that the real rate of return is negative right now. If you take interest rates and you take the Treasury yield, you're in a negative return environment. Anytime that happens, gold is, is a mandated uh, option in your portfolio. All right, here you see on this chart, when the real rate of return comes down, gold is coming up and it offsets each other. And, and likewise, when the real rate of return is very positive, gold is not very indicated. We'll come back here, but we're not there yet. All right, real rate of return. You obviously have geopolitics, as we alluded to last night, that will continue to drive the gold price. Uh, you have the U.S. Treasury market will flip. And, the, and the, here you see the, the Treasury bond yield that's creating those real rates of returns uh, being negative. I want you to look at this chart because right now we're in a consolidation phase. Don't let it scare you away. Look at the gold chart in the last 11 years. We had, a, we had about an 18-month consolidation phase here and another about 13-month here. Uh, we're about seven months into this one, and it could end uh, in seven months. It could end in, in one month, depending upon what that catalyst is. But it's a nice, calm market giving you the opportunity to step in. Okay. Now, that being said, uh, we know that it's going to come to an end. All right. So we want to be there for you from an exit strategy standpoint. Who is our company? Our company is a global uh, emphasis. We deal nationally and internationally. Uh, we do offshore storage for physical metals in your portfolio, which should be a portion of it. Uh, we'll do Swiss storage. We have Toronto storage. We have domestic storage. We do IRAs. Uh, if, if all of your liquid assets, in a sense, are in a retirement account, obviously we do delivery to you. But it's important that you understand that that we're going to take a macro approach and we're going to take an advising and a management approach and in that management approach we want to be the ones that are telling you when to sell. There will be a point where we want our clients exiting and looking at it as a profitable venture as well and that the landscape has changed and that we have the ability uh, to, uh, to truly profit and safely move into an undervalued asset class and that will be equities. That being said, we approach the portfolio. I talked about McIlvaney Wealth Management. We handle these two sides of the triangle. We approach the triangle, uh, or the, the portfolio as a triangle. This liquidity option obviously is, is more of your cash and low yield mandate, which isn't returning anything right now. Your insurance is your gold, silver, platinum, and palladium in the physical form. And then your stocks, bonds, growth, uh, your real estate and income is over here as well. And outside of the real estate, we will manage these two thirds for you. McIlvaney Wealth Management is four years old. Uh, they have uh, an approach similar to a hedge fund. I would encourage you to come by the booth and talk to me about that. We have a $350,000 minimum uh, portfolio uh, requirement in that regard, but the numbers speak for themselves. It's four years old. The last time I spoke here, it was a month old, and we've had quite the history and have grown to $120 million in assets under management in a short three and a half years. Uh, that being said, uh, please go to these other resource uh, opportunities. We have a strong educational component. David McIlvaney does a weekly commentary every week uh, at McIlvaneyCommentary.com. We have editors, authors, uh, you know, investors, politicians globally uh, that we want you to hear, economists uh, that are interviewed and it's, it gives you a global look on things. Uh, McIlvaney ICA is the precious metal site, uh, McIlvaney.com is our is our general parent parent site but we also have McIlvaney News is a new one so you have our weekly commentary you have our new monthly newsletter you have our uh, MIA today we do an annual DVD but please come see us and we'll address the educational component as well any questions no time. thank you okay, thanks. Mm -hmm.